All right, hi everyone. Welcome again to my channel. My name is Peter Sesele, and in this video, I have the opportunity of um, having Dr. Elango with me um, to share some experiences in terms of students that are preparing for interview uh, for their graduate program, either for masters or their PhD. So, just one of few words about you, Dr. Elango. Yeah, hello everybody. So uh, I'm Raj Alango. I'm an associate professor of pediatrics at the University of British Columbia. Um, and my primary area of research is in nutrition uh, with a focus on protein and amino acids. Uh, and uh, my lab is uh, located in BC Children's Hospital. And uh, I'm interested to know what questions Peter has for me. Absolutely. So I've had a couple of people have, have asked me, how do I prepare for interviews with prospective supervisors? So, so one of the first thing is as, as a professor, at what stage will you consider like inviting a student for an interview? Uh, so usually uh, by the time somebody is calling you for an interview, that means that uh, a couple of positive things, they probably have a position available for a student. Uh, and they're actively looking um, and it's possible that they notice something in your uh, CV or resume and your email uh, which attracted their attention um, so which is already a good these are all good signs already and so in terms of preparation for the interview I mean it, it is a shot in the dark in the sense that uh, the supervisor does not know much about you beyond the CV that you've given them um, but you know a lot about the professor, obviously, because you can see what publications they have done. Um, so it is important for you to prepare in, in a way that be aware of what the professor has done in the past and recently as well. So I think that is number one, making sure that you are aware of what whom you're speaking to is very important. And of course, then goes without saying, you know, if you have um, a certain strengths that you have in terms of work skills uh, make sure that you refresh your memory on them uh, especially if it was in your resume uh, if you said that you do SDS page for example uh, and if the professor is going to ask you some questions about that and you do not know how to respond to that that is not going to go well uh, so make sure that you're preparing of anything that you said in the resume is up for questions number one Absolutely. Okay, thank you so much. And then another, another part of it is uh, so as maybe based on experience as well. So when you're interviewing students, maybe some people might be scared of crowds, you know, so is it like one only like yourself and interviewing the students or if you have like some other grad students in the lab or maybe postdocs, do you invite like everybody for the interview? Uh, yeah, I think that's a personal choice. Um, some people do uh, get their either research manager in the in the Zoom call nowadays. Um, um, postdocs for sure um, are there, uh, but then some people like to just interview them by themselves because ultimately it is the supervisor's responsibility to uh, take on any grad student that they might be interested in. Um, so I, I would think it's more personal preference. Okay. Uh, but be prepared to have more than one people on the call. I mean, go in assuming there could be more than one. And then if it's just a supervisor, then that's good. Absolutely. Absolutely. Thank you so much. And then the other part of it. Um, so some have also asked me, are there like maybe sample one or two sample questions, you know, that professors might ask maybe from CV or maybe outside of CV in terms of, oh, maybe tell me about yourself, or what are your background, you know, are there any, maybe one or two sample questions you might ask during an interview? Uh, like I already mentioned earlier, um, usually if there are any kind of specific techniques and techniques, uh, okay. anything that you may have said in your resume uh, are usually of interest uh, okay. for professors because we want to know to what extent you were able to do that method uh, and especially if that's what the laboratory uses as a primary methods as well um, then make sure that you are prepared to answer those questions um, okay. from a technical point of view uh, another example of a question which usually comes up is also, um, for example, if it's a certain area that you have chosen to be interested in and you stated it uh, quite clearly in your area, in your in your 
email and or resume, uh, then the obvious question would be, why are you interested in, in this topic? What led you to that topic? Um, and there's usually a reason behind it, but sometimes Absolutely. you're not prepared to explain it clearly. So make sure you have that case ready why you're interested in that particular field of research that the professor is interested in or you have said you're interested in then why you need to be able to defend that as to why you're interested in and lastly um if your resume has any kind of gaps in there okay, gaps. Um, that is usually of interest to a lot of people people usually want to know uh what happened in you know january 2020 uh, it seems like there was a six month where there was nothing uh, break. I mean, there's probably a valid reason for it uh, and be prepared for that too. Okay, absolutely. Thank you so much. And then they've also asked um, in terms of, you know, maybe at the end of the interview, you know, for students asking questions. So is that a ability for students to also ask questions as well? Is that kind of something you kind of evaluate maybe the person ask critical questions or yeah i think it's important that you come prepared with some questions too okay um because it's it is important that you have kind of thought through um the the application that you've sent in to that lab um, make sure that you um have a set of questions that's number one what questions they are might be different based on your individual demands and needs etc but usually what you need to know uh, is uh, what kind of a, um, a research lab it is uh, is it a team-based approach uh, and and if so then who are in the team um, so that you can kind of assess what kind of a environment that you are entering into uh, and also okay. in terms of uh, uh, as a student you are well within your rights to certainly ask a question as to uh, what kind of a supervision um, uh, would you be able to receive if you were able to come i think that's a fair okay. question you want to know uh, if the supervisor is going to give you uh, enough time to meet with you or he or she is somebody who is more uh, hands off, then you need to be aware of their style, which may or may not agree with your needs. So that is, uh, I would certainly say, make sure you comment, make a comment about it. Absolutely, that's fine. And the last part of it, so after an eight interview, so so you just kind of follow up, um, maybe if either they're successful or not, or should, if maybe they don't hear back from you, does that mean like they are not chosen or they should kind of follow up to, get an update of the progress or if they're chosen or not absolutely i think you're i think you should reach out to them after a sufficient okay. amount of time uh, one email uh, okay. again anything more than that would be considered harassment uh, i would suggest that you send a follow-up email a week after you've interviewed okay, a week after okay uh, and just send thank them for the time and the interview and uh, they're happy to meet with you again if you need to meet with them and then leave it at that and uh, okay. again sometimes professors tend to interview many many students and they may not be able to get back to everybody uh, it really depends on each individual case but you have to give the professors the benefit of the doubt um, and, and just have a professional email sent and that way if they are interested in you maybe they're just waiting to get through all the other interviews before they get back to you right uh, but they, it's in their mind because you've reached out to them a week after and then they would respond to that email absolutely thank you so much this has really been very helpful i think um you you really answered a lot of the questions that i just you know answered from my own side of it but hearing from you now is really time saver and really thank you so much for the opportunity to have this conversation with you